Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political uh, Vigilante. Uh, I am speaking with uh, Patreon supporter uh, Christian Mueller from, you're in Berlin, is that correct? No, I'm uh, near Frankfurt. Oh, you're Mine. near Frankfurt. Okay, great. I'm, another, no problem. Another city I've been to. Um, so, first of all, thank you for, for supporting the show. I very much appreciate it. And this is... Uh, uh, it's you've been a supporter. It's an awesome show. Yeah, well, thanks, man. I, I really, and uh, I know it's nighttime there, so guten Abend. Um, this oh. is the, the handful. Half of past uh, a quarter to nine p.m., so no problem. Okay, cool. Um, well, so you wanted to talk about on this um, show uh, uh, something that most Americans are probably not aware of. I think so. I think so. So why don't you share it? Tell, tell, tell everybody what you just told me before we started recording. Yes, it's a tiny little thing called the German Constitution. And the German Constitution has one article. It's, uh, I think uh, you use the term amendment. And it's the Ninth Amendment, Part 3, mm -hmm. where labor unions are protected by the federal constitution of my country. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought unions, I'm told in America that unions are bad for uh, business growth and everything else. That's what I, was th that's what I thought unions were. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever I hear these absolute buffoonish, idiotic and false argument, I cringe. Yeah. Well, look, Germany is the most powerful economy in Europe. And we have our bunch of corporate buffoons as well. No doubt about this. They're everywhere. But, <laughs> they're ev like everywhere. But uh, the ninth article, part three, is introduced in the Constitution to, uh, due to the very rough uh, lessons we learned uh, by the Nazi uprising. Mm -hmm. One of the first things uh, Adolf and his cronies did was uh, killing the unions. Really? Yeah. Look at, look at it. There are tons of uh, articles about it in Wikipedia. Why? The unions back in the time and today are more left-leaning, social democratic, even socialist uh, <clears throat> associations. And these were the main enemies uh, of the uh, uh, of the right wing government. Uh, by the way, greetings out to Ben Shapiro. If you ever t uh, try to tell us that Adolf Hitler was a was a liberal socialist, go go in your grave, go in your <laughs> cave, and uh, sniff your farts whatsoever. But never, never use this argument again. Right. Never. Well, let me let's let's backtrack a little bit before we get into the constitutional amendment. We'll bring bring the actual language up on the screen here in a second. Mm -hmm. But so growing up in Germany, you the German schools, correct me if I'm wrong, absolutely teach what Hitler and the Nazis did, right? As you don't hide to from a, that, you don't to to a certain way. Um it, it decreases by the years I'm for, uh, 42 years old, and my school war time was in the 80s and in the 90s. And at this time, we had a, a decent amount of uh, teaching about the Third Reich and the mechanics behind it. But this is in a decline, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And we have, our, we have right-wing idiots in Germany as well. Not in the, not in the, uh, in that extent. You have you have a pretty right wing government. On an international level, we in Germany have a mixture of center right and center left. Mm -hmm. To to give you an idea, what I mean is so. Let's take Chancellor Angela Merkel. In my in my interpretation, she is somewhere between uh, Chucky the Shoe and Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> As 
I say, I like Jimmy Dawes. But like, <laughs> Chucky the Shoom. That's awesome. It's, it's in quote from Jimmy Dawes. Yeah, that's, that's like a Chicago thing. We say that, Chucky the Shoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, Chuck Chuck seems, in my understanding, a coward buffoon. Something like this. You name it. That's an accurate uh, appraisal of Chucky the Shoom. I would say he's a coward <laughs> buffoon mm -hmm. uh, who just now wants to give, let, uh, you know, they want to have a bipartisan deal that'll let Trump have a wall so <laughs> on the Mexican border, which is just so. Dear cool. Americans, dear Americans, ask us Germans. The wall doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come on, guys. It's not so. So long ago, it's just 30 years ago, Germany was divided by a wall in Berlin, several, several times broken mm -hmm. uh, or overwhelmed, you name it. And the, 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 the border between the German Federal Republic and the German Democratic Republic, you might remember there were two German states for a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. There were not strong and by the way the caravan they are not illegal they are not in the u.s right now so they, by any mean they aren't illegal right they are only illegal when they cross the, the border told to be gone and don't go then you can call them illegal right well, let's, Am I right? Yeah, you're absolutely correct you're absolutely correct and it's such a great thing I think Americans really have a problem um, aligning what's happening today with any sort of historical reference and they really don't seem to be willing many Americans not all but many Americans yeah, but, uh, Graham what do you learn about history in schools well we you know I'm not a fair representation because my father was a college professor so we lived in Germany for a year as a child because uh, he had a Fulbright, he had a research scholarship, so we lived in mm, Fulbright, yeah, I know, I, I know it by term. <laughs> yeah, and before I was born, my family, my brother and two older sisters, I'm the youngest, they lived in actually Berlin, so they were there in the 60s mm -hmm. during the height of the Cold War and the height of the Berlin Wall. I saw the Berlin yeah, in, Wall in the, in the 60s, they, they built the wall. Yeah. But, well, but it's, it's interesting. May I, may I have a question to you? What do you think I'm a, or what kind of professional I am? Just tell me what do you think? I think, well, <laughs> knowing if I didn't have an understanding of Germany and Europeans, I would think mm -hmm. maybe you were some sort of academic. But the thing that I've noticed from meeting many Europeans is, is talking politics and being well educated on a numerous a numerous issues and speaking multiple language is kind of across the board so my guess is uh, you could be anything you could be a, an engineer you could be anything yeah actually I'm I worked for 10 years in insurance business as a certified insurance clerk uh, if you are interested how it works in Germany, we could talk about, but this will take a bit of time. We Germans like to make things a bit complicated, <laughs> to, <laughs> but it works. And there are some surprises for uh, your American uh, viewers as well. Well, how it works in Germany. And we, I would be interested to have let's take a round table how it works in germany canada and a bunch of other countries what do you think about something like that well that's an interesting thing i think it would be it would be very um uh hold on a sec um i think it would be very interesting to have that discussion because i think that seems to like like it, it, it would be valuable for Americans to hear it because we tend to be you know a part of it is our geography we're kind of you know only four of our states border a country that doesn't speak English the, our northern border is all Canadian so everyone up there speaks English only the the region of Quebec where they uh, speak this weird 
French. French thing. <laughs> no, and look. The majority of our states then border each other or mm -hmm. oceans. Yeah, let, look, and there is something else. Germany has a population of about 80 million people. And we live on an, uh, we live on an area, I must, I must look, but I think it's something, uh, New Mexico, a bit smaller yeah. or a bit bigger than that. 80 million people. And um, my, my American friends, if you drive longer than four hours, I think at each point in Germany, from each point, you, if you drive longer than four hours in one direction, you will enter a foreign country with a foreign language. Yep. Poland, Denmark, Czech, the Czech Republic, um, France. Austria. Okay, that's the uh, that's the same language, but it's it's a different country. Switzerland, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, and I think I missed one or two. Yeah, which is which that's the thing I've always noticed about Europeans because the countries are smaller and they all just about every European country with the exception of uh, the UK borders a bunch of countries that speak different languages and have different cultures and so it was sort of yeah. a geographical necessity to speak multiple languages and well yes I speak English I think I speak English quite well I understand uh, bit of French, I, I, I know a few words in Spanish and Portuguese, but that's not for conversation. Right. Where most Americans the, know English and they know how to say <laughs> gracias, and that's about it. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, let's go back to the ninth article. Yes, let's put that, put that information up on the screen if you don't mind. Uh, how do I, I sent you uh, uh, in the Skype chat the whole... Uh, so, because that's my very first live stream. Okay. okay. Ah, not not really. I was on some smaller live streams in 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 Germany, but I don't count them in. Right. But I I sent you the links uh, the, and the text. The link is uh, direct from the Department of Justice in Germany. Can you send it to me again? Because I'm having a hard time finding it. All right. It's in Skype. Sorry, it's in Skype. Oh. I send it to you. I, I could send it to you by Patreon as well. No problem. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Um, so while we're... There is the link and... Uh, Here it is. If you want to have the text in moment. The and here is the passage, the text. Article nine. Yeah, Article nine, um, part three. The right to form association, to safeguard and improve working and economic conditions, shall be guaranteed to every individual and to every occupation or profession. This includes prostitution <laughs> just to say it prostitution uh, is no longer illegal in germany just a uh, side fact um there are many problems today as well i will give you that but i think it's a step in the right direction well let me ask you this how strong then our our are the labor unions in germany It depends. Um, uh, it depends how do you define strong. How much influence uh, do they have? How, how, how are the, the wages and benefits of their workers? You know, when their workers feel like they're being mistreated, how much leverage does the union have to... Um, if, they, if they stand up, they have quite a leverage. But... Um, we uh, we Germans do not riot a lot. It's, it's let's say it's a cultural thing. You won't see 
pictures like in France with the yellow jackets in Germany so much. In Germany, we are more uh, the consensus type of people. So um, employers and employees sit together, they talk a lot, they and in the end they come come with a compromise both parties could live with. Mm-hmm. It could be. I personally think uh, labor unions should be a bit stiffer, a bit more, uh, do it with a bit more force. But in the end, it worked out very well for the last, let's say, seventy decades after World War Two, <laughs> because we have a stable economy and we have. Nearly decent wages for the most of the people. We have a growing, uh, we have a growing low wages sector. I will give you the, this as, as well. But we, I, I think if I compare to the U.S. with all what I see on your channel or TYT or whatsoever, what I see, Tom Hartman, you name it, um, you. I think we in Germany have nearly paradise-like conditions in compared to the U.S. Oh yeah, I mean to 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 give you a personal example, I myself had cancer in two thousand eleven. I'm only insured by the uh, public insurance, and I was on the operation table within four weeks. From first uh, rec- for from first diagnosis to uh, to uh, surgical procedure four weeks and these four weeks were necessary to make the whole staging procedure. Okay. And I think I would be dead today if I lived in the U.S. because I myself are not in the highest ranks of wages. I literally make thirty thousand euros a year. It's not that much in Germany either. I give you that. But I'm fully covered with uh, health insurance. Are you covered through your job or through the government? Neither. It's a... It's hard to... It's hard to translate because it's a... Corporational body the U.S. don't know. It's a corporation in public law without profit ah. goals. Something like this. It, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an economist. An economist might translate it better with, without it. But sure. It, so what did uh, you pay? What, what, what um, did you pay out of your pocket to, to get cured from cancer? Um, only because we choose to go to a, uh, uh, let's say, higher class bedroom, that's all. All the medical procedures were, uh, uh, were covered by the normal insurance, 600, uh, 600 euros, and uh, I think 100 euros more for... Uh, pouches because I had uh, I I don't know I don't know how to translate it I must look at 700 euros roughly roughly and that's only because I choose to go to a better better bedroom only if I didn't do that uh, I would have paid 100 maybe 200 so you decided to treat yourself to a better bedroom and that cost you the equivalent in today's exchange rate of $795.53. So I just want people watching this to know that you- For, uh, But uh, I must say, it, no, uh, it was about 800 because I was, t- uh, I was in hospital twice, uh, main surgery and uh, let, let, me sh- let me seek something to give you an idea. But let's just, I mean, I'm not, I don't need like an exact down to the dollar, but I just want to paint this picture for anyone watching this in America. Let's say 
let's say $800, but only because I choose a better bedroom. Right, it would have been about $200 if you didn't want a better bedroom. Yeah. And then do you pay a Roughly. monthly premium for this? Um, yes, that I can give you exact eyes. I think that will you blow away. I guarantee you this. Um, I'm, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so while he's getting that number for us, I just want to talk to everybody watching. You know, this is the thing we're talking about here with Medicare um, for All, right? So when they say, oh, we can't afford, this is Germany that has a very robust economy. It only has 80 million people. So the state, uh, the, the, the state of California has the fifth largest economy in the world, right? So to anyone out there watching. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. So, okay. so what, is your, what is your monthly premium? Um, moment, moment, moment. Because I just want people to understand here what universal health care really looks like in a Western industrialized country with a good economy. One of the reasons with it has an excellent a, economy, with an to excellent be fair. economy, right? An excellent economy. One of the reasons it has an excellent economy is because unions are protected in the Constitution. So. Yes. That, that is something that uh, most Americans, this is the first I've heard of it. My father speaks fluent German. You know, mm. he has a PhD in German theater history. And this is the first I've heard of this because this is not talked about on the mainstream media. CNN and MSNBC and Fox News are going, oh, why come on. they're not saying, kick, why don't we have them. healthcare kick like them. Germany? Kick them. You, to give you an idea. I, I follow I follow the Young Turks. I follow CNN. I follow MSNBC. I even follow Alex Jones and uh, Fox News just to get an idea. And the nearest thing I, to the quality we have in German press is the Young Turks. They are biased, liberal biased. They openly admit it. I, I, they only very seldom got their facts wrong, and if they do so, they correct it. Right. That, that's like German press. Yeah. So, uh, but but my premium, and I, yeah, that will blow you over. I pay two hundred one euro and forty three cents a month. Okay. That's not too much for first class uh, healthcare. Two hundred dollars a month. So it's funny. I was talking to somebody after a progressive euros. Company. Euros. Sorry, euros. euros. That's, it's, okay. it's a bit more in dollars. About two fifty, probably. Uh, yes, but uh, Graham, you must understand that it's not only the surgery which was covered, but also uh, the uh, aftermath. Uh, uh, how do you? Say? Aftercare. The aftermath screening and a three-week aftermath cure to bring you up to, uh, to, to power. And this was essential. So, I just and, want to spell this out for people mm, watching. So, if you get cancer in America, you're looking at a million dollars. I mean, you're looking at that, you're looking at, even that's with health insurance, you're looking at the fuck? probably having to file bankruptcy. I, I, you're, you're joking. No, 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 not joking. Uh, may, I, uh, may I jump in because uh, in Germany, I, I figured out that this treatment is about 100,000 euros with all in all, which uh, uh, includes several radiological uh, screenings, uh, coloscopia, it was colorectal cancer by, uh, with me, and, and so on and so on. And, but a million? Oh, it's, it can go up to that easily. Like if you have to do uh, a lot of chemo and, and, and stuff like oh, okay. that. Like, yeah, okay, that, that could be in Germany as well, but it's, it's covered. It's fully covered. Sure, it's covered. Just to give, just to give you an idea, we, we, are, we are both uh, film and maybe serious enthusiasts. The, the story of Breaking Bad in Germany, you have lung cancer, we have this, this and that options. I think Kyle Kolinsky uh, uh, did uh, said it on his show as well. Or uh, what was the other example? Do we, what uh, you must understand? Um, first season, House of Cards. 
the new one, not the English one. Uh -huh. When uh, the character of Robin Wright blackmailed the, her employee to stand in the firm because it, he, she will cut her head and her, that's not important. That's not possible in Germany. Yeah. The, what you have is a modern version of intentional servitude. I, I hope I didn't mess it up. I, I think you know what I mean. Oh, absolutely. That's the point. Is like Because the only place to get good health care in America is through mm -hmm. an employer, they then have that over you. It's why we no. couldn't have 2,000 nationwide strikes because our many employers would, would we, I can't do that if I've got diabetes or a kid with asthma or, no. uh, I can't do to it. All, to all the, the freedom loving people who might see this show, what kind of freedom is this when your employer has this power over you? That's a, I hope that's a legit question. Yeah, and that's the thing we're trying to get across is like mm -hmm. the workers no, need to... That, that's no freedom. That's no freedom. You are forced to stay in your shitty uh, shitty work. In Germany, even unemployed are insured. <laughs> even the unemployed are insured. I mean, it's yes. just, it's amazing to me. I, I, I Again, or, I spoke to a woman, so you're paying the equivalent of $250 roughly uh, a month. Yes, but this this cost me another uh, premium. Let's. But before you say that, I just need to make this point for our viewers here. So I met a woman mm -hmm. after a progressive comedy tour show who told me she's 63 years old and she's paying $900 a month for Obamacare and it's awful coverage because uh, women um, have a pre-existing condition of being female in the eyes of the American insurance industry. Oh, and uh, in the German private insurance as well. Oh. As I said, I worked as an as insurance broker and we have private health insurance in Germany as well. Hmm. And that's how we the have... for-profit insurance companies operate, especially here in the States, where we could have in America what you have. We could have Medicare for all. I mean, that's what we want. And and because to the be, healthcare industry gives so much to, money to the politicians on both to, parties, to fair, it's hard to, to be have. Fair, if you have uh, full coverage through Medicare, your system would be become maybe a bit better than our German system because we have several public health insurers. We have the Allgemeine Ostkrankenkassen, AUKA, uh, general general coverage, we have specialized uh, uh, health insurers, public health insurers, who were set up by companies, but separated from the companies. That is of utmost important to understand that companies could set up a uh, special public health insurer, but they operate not within the uh, company, but they are separate. And I'll separate, govern, and uh, the overview is separate. The founding company has almost no influence on them. Yeah, that's that's amazing to me. As uh, I said, <laughs> we Germans like it to make it a bit complicated. Sure, sure. Germans do like to make things a little complicated, but uh, well. Christian, you know, as, as we're uh, going to wrap up here, but like, I thank you so much for bringing this information to our attention because it's really mm -hmm. helpful to everybody watching to realize what what I'm saying and what this conversation and what you're saying is. Is like, so when the politicians in both parties tell you we can't have these things in America, it's because they don't want you to have them because there's multiple reasons. One, they're getting money from the healthcare industry. Two, we have more power as individuals if we aren't dependent upon our employers for health care right we can't walk out we can't strike we can't ask for better wages and benefits and they know this which is why there's no way on this earth nancy pelosi is going to give medicare for all she might move the age down to 55 or something like that just to kind of throw some bread and she in. will she will bring this tax bill up uh, yeah. uh, with this 60, uh, 60 vote majority for raising taxes, which kill Medicare for all. How, how cool is that? Frank, what, what people are they? 
that do they have any compassion for other people? Any, just a little bit. They I, don't. Do, I doubt it. I doubt it. They're no, they're so, they're sociopaths, and 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 they the are that's killing that's, people. They're killing people. Both parties are killing people. Forty-five thousand people die a year in America because they don't have good health care. Forty-five thousand people a year. Forty-five thousand. Let me say it blunt. Murders. Murders. Forty-five thousand murders. You could take all these congressmen, women, you name it, and indict them just to see what comes out, because they deliberately uh, deny the American public health care, and that's one of the yeah, that's genocidal. Yeah, it is. That's genocidal. For my understanding, that's genocidal. Right, and it's like. It's both parties have done it, and when 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 neoliberals think that the Democratic Party is really fighting for them, they're not. The powerful people within the Democratic Party have blocked this repeatedly. Um, so, I follow you, which, which means uh, the liberal online media, since the Trump election, because I want I want to understand how this could happen. Yeah. I found, uh, I think I first found uh, the Young Turks. From the Young Turks, I jumped to Jimmy Dore. And from there, it was like, uh, uh, no, Wi-Fi is the wrong word. But from there, I found even more Tom Hartman or Farron Cousins from Ring of Fire. Amazing guy. Mm -hmm. Well, Christian, I really thank you for supporting the show mm -hmm. and taking your time for this. Any closing thoughts you want to leave our viewers? Well, I hope your, your audience, I speak directly to your audience, I hope you understand that there are different ways to do it and they work. Germany is by no stretch of imagination a socialist hellhole like Venezuela right. or Denmark. Look at the Scandinavian countries, they do a d even better job than Germany. Right. A far more better job. Look at their prisons. Look at their uh, look at their rates. Look at their tremendous success. And please, please, get rid of idiots like Ben Shapiro or Alex Jones. They they are lunatics. Yeah. yeah. They have no idea uh, how it, it works in other countries, or even if they know, they on purpose don't tell you on well, purpose they're purposely doing it but you know you're you're doing more than you realize by supporting a show like this or Jimmy Dore you know you're without patreon supporters like you I can't keep doing this channel so the more people that support stuff like this the more we can get this information out because there's no way they're going to talk about the ninth amendment to the German constitution on MSNBC or Fox News there's no way <laughs> on yeah, this earth that, that that's why I hope you will spread the word with the most, uh, most, most highly verve into your community and from there out to the US. Because I think when it works in Germany, why shouldn't it work in the US? Of course, of course. We are not that different. We we breathe, we breed, we love, we fight. <laughs> we are humans, for God's sake. Yeah, drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but American beer, I can't, can't no, call beer no, here's by the any stretch of the imagination. Well, I don't drink anymore, but I'll tell you this. The American beer you're having is not good. If you come to the States and go to these, there's all these amazing microbreweries that have popped up in the last 15, mm -hmm. 20 years. Craft beers, yes. That's, that's good beer. Best. That's stuff yes. a German would like. Budweiser, that's for, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> This, luckily, this we isn't. Call it a, horse, we call it horse pee. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. It's horse piss. Luckily, this isn't the beer vigilante. This is the political vigilante. So I, <laughs> I very much appreciate right. your time, Christian, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone out there watching. Thank you for supporting the show. And you can go to patreoncom slash Elwood and you too can bring up awesome topics like this that I was not aware of. And now. Thanks to Christian and other Patreon supporters, many more people are aware of this, which awareness, it goes awareness, acceptance, action. Those are the three steps. Mm -hmm. So now that we're aware, we can accept what's going on in America and the world, 
and now we can take action about it and petition our lawmakers to have what Germany has and other countries like it. So thank you so much for your time, Christian. You are making I appreciate it. I love it. great again.